Would you believe me if I told you every single video I've edited in the past two years was done on my powerhouse M1 Ultra Mac Studio? Well, you shouldn't believe me because that's the biggest lie I've told on this channel. In fact, the truth is, it was all, up till this very day, done on this basic Mac Mini first generation. That's right. Way back in February of 2021, I was finally able to afford myself a Mac product. Naturally, I went with the best value and I got the base M1 Mac Mini with the 8-core CPU and the 8-core GPU. Though I did finally muster the energy and the budget again to double the default memory to 16 gigabytes of unified memory or RAM, though that left me with no additional money, so I opted to get the base 256 GB Sodsay drive. However, despite these limited specifications, this thing has been an absolute beast. At the time, I was using a Sony A6400 to capture most of my footage, including my B-rolls and my main production. However, I was surprised no matter how much footage I threw on Final Cut Pro 10 with my Mac Mini, it just kept taking it. And I was recording in 4K 8-bit, so it wasn't a low resolution either. There was almost never a time where I can remember having a single frame drop, no matter how many effects I added, no matter how many times I hit that stabilization button, it was a total champ and editing on my timeline was a crisp and smooth experience. I really had to try and make it lag in any form and even then it was quite the challenge. So you can imagine how happy I was with my Mac Mini and I had no use case to upgrade it. The true limitation of my Mac Mini did not become apparent until much later. In fact, present times to be accurate. So. A couple months back, I upgraded to a Sony A7 IV. Shortly thereafter, I started recording in 422 10-bit 4K. I didn't realize it at the time, but this puts a lot more taxation on the system. It was around this time that multi-layer editing on Final Cut Pro proved to have the occasional frame drop. Now, in all fairness, this wasn't nearly as dramatic and I could still have a pretty smooth workflow and get away with 4K 10-bit footage. However, a little bit later on, I started color grading. Hopefully you've noticed that in my videos and I started applying lookup table effects as well, sometimes multiple lookup table effects. And this combination of color correction and effects really started taxing the M1 Mac mini hard, even with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. I started noticing frequent frame drops. If I dared to have multiple layers of footage, I really saw heavy frame drops. And if I had effects that were using multiple footage as well, sometimes it would go to the point where it would skip the entire frame rate for that effect. And then I would get a quick error saying that Final Cut Pro had to skip through to keep performance. And this was despite using the better performance settings. Eventually I realized this is the pivoting point of the M1 Mac Mini. Hopefully you're starting to see the theme I'm trying to get at over here. The bar to actually kind of break the M1 chip is extremely high. It's such a impressive product. I literally had to go with 4K 10-bit 422 image quality to even come close to seeing some sort of visible lag on my workflow experience. And that basically means that 80% of you are not gonna hit that criteria. Now granted, video editing is not the only niche out there. There's programming slash coding, 3D modeling, architecture work, and all sorts of other use cases, and each one will have a different breaking point with the M1 chip. The point I'm trying to make is though, is that video editing is a great objective metric, and you really have to push the M series chips to get any meaningful result by upgrading. So what I'm saying is that even if you were to go right now and get the current generation M2 base chip, and you just upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM, 80% percent of you will get the perfect results and you'll have a great product that will last you for the years to come. The other 20%, again, you probably already have a fixed use case and you already know you need the additional horsepower. Now, some of you might be guessing what computer I'm upgrading to. I'm not gonna reveal it here because I am making a video on it, but you can take a guess. It is still a Apple product and hint in, it's a more recent one. Let me know which one you think it is in the comments section below. And hopefully this is giving you some general idea of the kind of experience you can expect even if you bought a refurbished M1 Mac mini today, though I would wholeheartedly advise getting 16 gigabytes of memory as 8 gigabyte can be a little limiting. Thank you so much for watching this video. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please consider hitting that sub button and liking this video. Catch you in the next one.